Alright guys, today is about reflections and again we're going to have to uh, do this a little different way. Uh, what we're doing in the first two examples here is we're going to reflect point B and point A and line segment CD over this, this line L. And uh, similar to when we did the translations, I'm going to have to do it a little different way. We're also going to do this example where we reflect this triangle and this teardrop kind of place or kind of shape over uh, this line L right here. So uh, let me switch over to another view and uh, we'll show you how to do that. All right, guys, uh, we're going to now do a reflection on your note packet and see I've got my little piece of tracing paper again and what I'm going to do is put it right over the top here and when you do a reflection you want to think that it is a flip alright and I'm going to think of it as taking my little piece of tracing paper and literally flipping it right over that line okay and other people a lot of people try to they think of it as a fold and they actually take their piece of paper and they fold it right right along this line okay but if I'm going to take this piece of tracing paper I'm going to put it right along that line okay and I'm going to trace here's point B alright I'm going to trace point B there and here's point A I gotta get myself a new pencil alright here's point A and here's line segment CD alright I'm just tracing over those right there and if I were to imagine taking this piece of paper I'm not gonna imagine I'm actually gonna do it I'm gonna take this piece of tracing paper and flip it right along that line okay lining everything back up here well look at point B actually since it was right on that line reflected to that same point so this is point B prime as well okay um, point A notice point A reflected right over to here on the other side of that line and if I were to measure if I were to measure this distance right here from A to that line and to measure from there to A prime these would be the same okay and same thing with CD here's line CD if I were to measure from here to here that would be the same as from here to here okay so a reflection is just like a flip we're flipping that piece of paper right over that line alright I would do the same thing with this example okay this example right here but I'd hold my paper like this I always hold it right along that line we're trying to flip over okay so I would trace this shape and I would trace this shape okay I'd get right over the top of it and now since I'm flipping over this horizontal line I take my piece of paper and I'd flip it this way and there's my reflection right there and if I'm really good I could I could go back here and when I'm here I could darken this in a, a, a really dark okay darken it in with my pencil that's the pencil works best for this okay and I could darken this in just like that and when I flip it over if I just flip it straight over and if I go over the top of this back here it actually would transfer over onto the paper okay and sometimes it works certain kind of pencils work better than others if I take that away oh you can kind of see that that shape right there okay so very very easy um, to do that just flipping the paper over that line alright now that we've finished the kind of the arbitrary reflecting over some line now let's do it a little more mathematical and let's go back to our or go to our coordinate plane here and you have this on your note packet and what we're gonna do is reflect 
uh, these points in this triangle over the x-axis. All right. Notice the notation here. This R says I'm going to do a reflection. All right. And usually, right below, there's a little uh, subcomponent of this R. That is what they they tell you what you're going to reflect over. So here we're going to re reflect over the x-axis. So point A would be 3 comma 2. That would be right here if I graphed it. Well, not if I graph it. I actually did graph it. But uh, point A is 3 comma 2. And I want to reflect this. Now, if I were going to do it using a sheet of paper and do the flipping uh, over the x-axis here, what I would have happen is this, this point A would actually transform down to this quadrant down here. And what I can do is I can just count. I can count one, right? One unit, two units, and I get to the x-axis. Well, then I just count one unit, two units, and that is where the image, or A prime, is going to be. And that point is three comma negative two. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a rule that will work every single time for a reflection over the x-axis. And, uh, well, let's not do the rule just yet. Let's, let's do this one. Uh, negative 4, comma 5 would be right here. All right, that's to the left 4 and up 5. So that's negative 4, comma 5. All right, and I do the same thing. If I reflect it over the x-axis, I can simply count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and keep going the same direction one two three four five and that is where b prime is going to be and that is the point negative four comma negative five alright so let's see if we can come up with a rule here that took place i started out with some x and some y in this case it was three comma two and in this case it was negative four comma five and what happened when I did the reflection over that x x axis? Uh, the the x value, well, the x value stayed the same. The three stayed the same, and the negative four stayed the same. But what changed was the y value. The y value it turned into the opposite number. The positive two became a negative two, and the positive five became a negative five. So what your rule is? Whatever the x value is, it stays the same, but whatever the y value is, it turns it to the opposite value. All right, now don't, uh, I keep saying opposite. This does not mean it always turns it negative. It were to, if it were to start out as a negative, start out down here, and I reflected it up here, that y value would turn positive. So that's why I keep saying opposite. Okay, guys, so what I did is I went ahead and I graphed the triangle here. I didn't think uh, we had to watch me do that. What I'm more interested in, now that I have this rule for reflection over the x-axis, it works every single time, do I really need to graph this? All right, if I really know the rule, I could come over here and say, well, when I reflect this point over the x-axis, the x stays the same, and the y turns opposite. Well, the opposite of zero is just zero. And I could do this one. When when x stays the same, this is c prime, when uh, d is reflected over the x-axis, it turns to d prime, x stays the same, and the five turns opposite. All right? And same thing with e. e prime, the x stays the same, and the y turns opposite. Opposite. So I go over here, and C and C prime are the same, the same point. Uh, D is at negative or positive nine, negative five. So that's going to be D prime right here. And C, I already did. E is going to be seven and negative seven. So that's going to be right down here. So that is E prime. And when I connect these, a reflection preserves the size and the shape of the object. So those two should look the same as long as I graph them correctly.
Okay? So once you know this rule, pretty straightforward. Alright? So let me turn that layer off. Let's turn this layer on. And this is uh, the third part here. Now notice we're reflecting over the y-axis. Okay? And we want to do the same thing. We want to come up with a rule that is going to allow me to do it every single time without having to graph it. All right, so this is negative 3, negative 2, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reflect over this vertical line, and I'm just simply going to count. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and there is the reflection. All right, there's the image. So that is the point, positive 3, negative 2. All right, so could we predict what the rule is. Well, what happened? The x values, this time, the x value went opposite. So, whatever I start with x, I'm going to change to the opposite. And look at what happened to the y values. The negative 2 stayed to be a negative 2. So, the y value is going to be the same. All right. Same thing will happen if I do point B. Point B is 4 comma negative 5, so that would be right here to start, okay, 4, negative 5, and if I count, if I, sl if I reflect over the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I do 1, 2, 3, 4 again, well, b prime, that is point negative 4, comma, negative 5, and again, you look at the rule holds, the x value changed to be the opposite, and the y value, well, that stayed the same. So my rule holds in that case. Okay, so I did the same thing as I did uh, before. I already graphed the triangle, and since I have this rule, I should be able to just come over here and say, well, if c is 0, 6, that is right there, uh, c prime should follow this rule if I'm reflecting over the y-axis. I turn the x value opposite, which opposite of 0 is just 0, and I keep the same y value. All right? And if I do this with the same with d, I turn that opposite and keep the same y value. And I do the same with e, E prime is going to turn that opposite and keep the same y value. Okay, so I'll graph this one in blue. All right, C prime and C are the same point, and D prime is over 5 and up to 9, which is going to be right here. This is going to be D prime. And E prime is going to be 7 up 3, which is going to be right here. And again, even though I did a reflection, it preserves the size and the shape. That's a terrible line. i got to be straighter with that. The size and the shape. So you have the same shape. It's just flipped over this y-axis right here. Okay? So uh, hopefully that went well, and thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.